Well, the World Economic Forum, yes, run by Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum says that we will experience a massive cyber attack that will hit before the year 2025, which will lead to a massive collapse of the banking industry, infrastructure, and so much more. How, how do they know this? It's unbelievable. Someone who's been following this. And very, suspicious very posts coming from official government recruiting Twitter accounts and X accounts, all right? This is happening right now. The US Space Force recruiting account is also posting very suspicious things and very strange things about our banking and how we need to get our money out and how there could be attacks on US satellites, all right? All this stuff is happening right now and they're getting us ready for some kind of big cyber attack or cyber events on the banking system. That's what I'm worried about. And in the aftermath of all this, there will be a CBDC central banking digital currency that is implemented and is used to track and trace and essentially enslave you. Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shai, Kohalayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Kodash, double honors to our apostles, and our elders and bishops of Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who put your lives at risk to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel through pushing the true breakdowns, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures to the rest of you believers. All right, those of you that make up the rest of the hopeful elect, all right, shalom, peace, and love be unto you. Hey, we're right at the precipice, you know, at, of the end of Esau, Edom, all right, and their rulership that they have through all right, this place, which is known as America, all right, which is known all right, prophetically all right, as Babylon, all right, and many other nations, I mean, many other names. All right. Which are spiritual names for this place. All right. This place is is that it's in. Now, what does the word precipice mean? The word precipice. All right. Is defined in the Merriam Webster Dictionary as a very steep or overhanging place. But it's also a hazardous situation. All right. The brink. All right, we're at the, the, the edge, you know, or the end of this man's rulership. All right, and they know it. All right, we know it. And these are some of the things that you must look for. All right, the major thing being the MOTB, all right, which is the RFID CHIP. All right, a glass cylinder, all right, which people that are willing to bow down and participate within this new world order will receive, but they're going to be punished for that and destroyed right with this system when it's destroyed. And to achieve all right, this NWO, all right, Esau Edom, that's ruling over the world, the rich elite banking families of Esau Edom, all right, will go to the low of allowing this place to collapse all right, using what is known as uh, order ab chaos. All right, and this is something that has, that has been warned about countlessly. All right, but however, we're going to continue to warn about it until it happens. You know, which there's uh, plots, there's plans from there, there's agendas. All right, there's uh, cyber, you know, attacks and, you know, false flags and things that are going to happen. All right, to achieve their goal all right these are things that they set back they scaled out all right they they plotted on it they thought about it within their think tanks and said well this is the best way to go about it but little do they know all right which they consult a lot with the spiritual demon satan are right, using witchcraft and sorcery and trying to figure out what's the best way to go about achieving are right, their inward uh, uh, new world order, their NWO. And the Heavenly Father being in control of the right hand side and the left hand side, are right, send them messengers, 
all right, on the left-hand side, Satan, all right, and demons to tell them, you know, particular things that they need to do. All right, so this is part of their plan. This is part of their agenda. And they believe that th doing this, uh, this will allow them to be successful, all right, in, in achieving their goal, all right, in which um, they're planning on, you know, a particular cyber attack, you know, to collapse, you know, the communication, you know, which is, you know, the cell phones, you know, the laptops, you know, uh, people's access to the Internet. All right. In which um, you'll be surprised how reliant our right, people have become just basic, basically upon this technology. All right. And using their phones, you use your phone for everything. You use your phone for GPS. A lot of people use their phones for banking. They use their phones to access information, all right, data, apps, all right, for, uh, for communicating with the outside world via social media, communicating with their familiar friends and family. All right, you, you use your phone for everything. But however, the phone is going to be replaced after all of this with the RFID CHIP. But however, after that system is established, which the infrastructure is laid, all right, it's not going to be too much longer of this place being in existence. It's going to be destroyed. Now, what you've seen in the beginning of this lesson, you've seen a snippet from Redacted, which uh, the title of the video that I got this from is She's Exposing the WEF False Flag Coming in 2024. Journalist Whitney Webb, all right, from um which they had her on the show as a uh, co-host. And uh, basically, she's exposing, you know, that um, basically a, a, a false flag, so-called cyber attack is going to happen. All right. And they're going to use that for their advantage. All right. Another uh, video uh, comes from um, what is this guy's name? Salakia, bear with me, Baba Kusha, which you might hear some audio pop up in the back. Okay. His name is uh, Patrick Humphrey. All right. And he's a, uh, you know, like an individual YouTube, you know, kind of guy who speaks about a lot of uh, SHTF scenarios. All right. And basically calls himself warning the people. But however, all right, the title of the, the, the video that he did was urgent military just warned us or warned us it's about to to happen get prepared now and there's a, a part of the video where he's talking about a so-called cyber attack that's going to uh uh take satellites offline is going to uh basically uh, disrupt the banking system all right. And, and that's that's it. They want to disrupt the banking system. They're going to use a particular false flag to do it. And eventually they're going to bring forth the CBDC. And we know what comes after the CBDC is established. That's the RFID CHIP and the brain CHIP. So we're right at the precipice of this thing. We're right at the edge. We're right at the brink of all of this happening. And us being the prophets of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. We are set up to warn the people. Hey, the scripture says in the book of um, 2 Ezra, the 15th chapter, in reading uh, 1 through 3, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said Yahweh, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imagination against thee, let not the incredulity of of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Verse 4 as well. For they for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You know, which um you have individuals saying that what we say the MOTB system all right isn't gonna be uh isn't gonna be established for what it is. All right, they're saying that the RFID C hip and the brain C hip isn't it. 
which you, which you're about to find out. You about to find out. Now, there's a movie on Netflix called Flee the World, which um I became hip to this movie maybe around, you know, the the 3rd of uh this month, which is uh December. You know, which the movie uh debuted on Netflix the 8th. And I said I was going to watch it on the 8th, but however, I didn't get around to uh watching it. But you know, I was able to watch it yesterday after camp. And uh man, that movie hits damn near almost all of the points that we hit with the exception of um actually showing you uh the chaos that's going to ensue inside of these cities, which which it would be good to get more visuals on that so that you can see it, you know, watch movies like The Purge, watch movies like The Road, so that your mind can get adapted to how things are going to be, which none of those movies that are showcased within Hollywood and on the screen can actually depict and capture uh, the level of how things are going to actually happen in society when it collapses, but it's going to happen in stages. It's going to happen in stages, and, and when it happens... To actually experience it, you know, it's going to be different than seeing it on the screen. And it's going to be way more frightening. And which this movie was dealing with a cyber, uh, cyber attack that basically uh, happened in three stages. You had um, uh, isolation, which they de uh, de uh, disable the communication and the transportation. So when you, when you uh, disable communication and transportation then basically that already make people go crazy. It's, it makes them ready to go crazy. Which um, I mentioned earlier, people are heavily dependent upon their cell phones, all right, and upon technology, upon the internet. So look at 2020 and see how uh, uh, unsociable people became and how angry they became at each other when they had to isolate, when you can find someone to a certain space that basically makes them go crazy. And the only thing that stopped people from really going over the, the edge was the fact that they still had the Internet. But once you take that Internet away, you're taking away a lot. You're taking away people's uh, entertainment, which they need bread and circus. You need bread and circus to stop the people from going crazy. They knew that in ancient Rome. But then you're taking away their, their ability to... A lot of people get direct deposit. All right, people who don't leave their homes order food and order things to be shipped to their homes. So you're basically severing their lifeline. All right? Uh, the next step is uh, synchronized chaos. All right? You, use, uh, uh, you terrorize the people with, with so-called covert attacks. You know, EMPs, you know, uh, uh, different kind of sonic, you know, waves that, that fuck with the ears and things of that nature. You know, you uh, put forth propaganda, you know, and things of that nature. And then eventually there'll be a uh, coup d'etat, a rising up against the government or a civil war, which will lead to what? It leads to a collapse. And this is what they you know, spoke about within that movie and spoiler alert, you know, I'm going to give away certain things that a uh, certain event that happened in the movie or rather something that was being described. So if you haven't seen it and you would like to check it out, go ahead and turn this video off at this point, you know, and then after you watch it, come back, you know, and look at this video. All right. So once again, the movie is Flee the World. It's on Netflix. You know, if you got Netflix, you can go and watch it. And um, I think I'm going to watch it a second time today because that's how entertaining I thought it was. You know, and this is something that we're waiting for. You know, this is something that we're waiting for. All right, like it was said within uh, Second Ezra, because that's the mindset that we're in. Um, first of all, you know, in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, in the second verse, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of de devils. And behold, uh, Salaki, in the hold 
of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird because eventually this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies, which there's no nation upon the planet earth. All right, that was a superpower, and, and that was basically isolated from the nation, and, and nations were trading with it the way that they were trading with America, and that uh, um, did away with all of their morals, you know, and their values, and their particular way of life, and their culture, and their language, you know, to uh, be accepted and to be able to trade with another country the way that nations have did that to trade with America. So they uh, accepted things as Moism, you know, Dykeism, les Lesism, you know, and, and so many other, you know, um, demoralizing things just to be able to be a partaker in that uh, uh, particular, you know, trade and dealings all right, with America. But now these nations have drunk their wine and they're mad because they're seeing that although they did all of that to compromise, they still ended up in a city with the shitty end of the stick. So reading on, and I heard, all right, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, all right, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive, all right, not of her plagues, which you come out of her first by coming out in, with your mind. So that's one way you can flee this world, by your mind, but eventually when uh, uh, shit really hits the fan in these nations because America has a lot of enemies. So when shit really hits the fan, then that's when, um, you know, we're going to need deliverance by way of the chariot because this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. But we com we're coming out of this place by way of coming out uh, uh, mentally. All right. By not following the ways of this place. All right, and the deliverance will come later when that thermonuclear destruction all right, ha uh, happens. In Salakia. So, another scripture, the book of um, 2 Ezra, the 14th chapter, uh, in uh, verse 13. Uh, it says, uh, Now therefore set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and renounce corruption. Let go from thee mortal thoughts and cast away thee the burden of man, put off the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy un unto thee, and haste thee to flee these times, for yet greater evils than these which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. You know, in another part that's mentioned, in the book of um, Second Ezra, the fourteenth chapter, it says that the er that the um, the the worth the world or the earth beginneth to wax old. All right, so we're at the end, and that's the reason why the Holy Spirit had me say in the beginning of the lesson that we're at the precipice of this. All right, the time where Esau is ending and Jacob is beginning. Now, the book of 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, it says, While well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. When you go into the word temporal, all right, the word temporal, all right, is defined as this. Let me pull it up in the blue letter. This is the word for temporal, which is proskarios. It says for a season, endure for a while. Now, when you go, because it's a compound word, pro, all right, uh, pros meaning to the advantage of, at, nearby, to, towards, with, uh, with regard to, all right, um, and um, the word karios is the second word. And it says, do measure, a measure of time, large or smaller portion of time, hence 
a fixed and definite time, a time when things are brought to crisis, the decisive epoch waited for. So this is what we wait waiting for. All right. When you define the word epoch, let's look it up. It says a period of time in history or a person's life, typically one marked by notable events or particular characteristics. So this is the second edge of the ninth chapter. You know, all of those tokens, you know, that were said uh, in prophecy by the prophets of things to look for within the latter days, all right, especially Yahweh Shai and Matthew, the 24th chapter. So we're looking for these particular events to happen so that eventually that change can come when we can rule over and Esau Eden will be taken down. Uh, the word crisis is defined as a time of intense difficulty, trouble, and danger. So this is the time that we're in, all right? A time of uh, um, difficulty, a time of danger, a time of change. But we're looking for these particular signs to happen in the world for those changes to come. Now, you have the elites that are sitting back and they have planned these things out and they're, they're manufacturing them, you know, in the earth to happen. All right, and, and trying to bring them to pass so that they can establish their new world order. But they don't know that in the midst of doing this, they're making themselves vulnerable and that this place is going to be destroyed. All right. And that, you know, um, or rather I should say they don't realize that all of this, this that they're doing in the earth all right, is not going to be to their advantage. It's not going to benefit them. They're thinking that they're going to cause a, a major world war, you know, understanding that America will be destroyed in that war. But they'll go into hiding and they'll uh, rule over the remaining aspect of the world. But what they don't realize is that that when all of this happened, the Heavenly Father has set them up to be in a position to where they're taken down and they're not going to rise back up. But this is the, this is something that they're planning out on the left hand side and they're using uh, something called predictive programming, which that should be something that you're familiar with. This right here comes from the physi uh, physi physiology of the extraordinary beliefs. You know, this is um, the Ohio State University and it says predictive programming by Daria Beaver. Predictive programming is theory that the government or other higher ups are using fictional movies or books as a mass mind control tool to make the population more accepting of planned future events. This was first described and proposed uh, by researcher Alan Watt, who de defines predictive programming as predict as predictive programming is a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media to acquaint all right, the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by our leaders. If and when these changes are put through, the public will already be familiarized with and will accept them as natural progression, thus lessening possible resistance and commotion. All right. Um, it says would then it was popularized by Alex Jones, David Icke. Uh, the most notable case of predictive programming are the examples found in The Simpsons, The Dark Knight Rises, The Hunger Games, The, o the Otis Being from uh, Futility. Information can be found on blogs, posts, and many cons conspiracy theorists have either made videos or on it or have spoken on the subject, you know, so we're considered a uh, particular, you know, con we're considered to be conspiracy theorists. But however, what we mention is conspiracy facts. All right, because the things that we speak on, when we make reference to things in in videos or in movies, you know, or in TV shows, you know, the things that we reference actually end up coming to pass. And these are things that are prophesied in the in the scriptures. But however, the elites, they prophesy on the left hand side. All right. They do a lot of left hand prophecies. All right. And I believe that this movie, Leave the World Behind, 
is one of them. They know that these things are getting ready to happen because they're planning it out. All right. So what we're telling you is to not abuse this world, meaning not to over much use this world. All right. Be ready for all of these the, the things to happen in regards to prophecy, the collapse. Now, going to the book of uh, Psalms, the 64th chapter, and I'm going to read this in the NLT. Um, beginning at verse four, it says they shoot uh, from ambush at the innocent attacking suddenly and fearlessly. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. All right, who will ever notice, they ask. As they plot their crimes, they say we have devised the perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning because they search out iniquities and they accomplish a diligent search. They go and look up everything, you know, they, they research, you know, they, they run tests, they sit, sit in, in circles and, and, and um, run particular war games or analysis and, and see how things are going to play out if they did X, Y, Z. All right, uh, uh, the whole CVD, fill in the missing letters, was nothing more but a mere test so that they can see how they need to roll out the next phase in which they ran that test on the world. But it was also a test from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to see who's going to be faithful to him or not. Because when they come with the next phase, all right, or the next thing, you're going to have the MOTB and a lot of people are going to fold under pressure. So in their mind, we have devised the perfect plan. This is it. This is how they're going to establish their NWO. Yeah, a cyber attack. If they did a cyber attack, all right, and they shut down uh, communication, they shut down transportation. All right, if they uh, uh, came with propaganda. All right, they'll they'll uh, make you feel as if, you know, something X, Y, Z, other nations are behind that, you know. But it's really the elites, you know, that are behind the scenes that are doing these particular things so that they can bring about their agenda. All right, the book of uh, uh, Psalms 140 and 5, it says, The proud hid a snare for me in, in courts. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Salah, and this is what they're doing. They're setting the trap. They're setting the gin, you know, with their plots, their false flags, their agenda. All right, another scripture, the book of Job 20 and 22, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits and every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. So what is the fullness of his sufficiency? All right, that's when, they're, when they have reached the, the, the pinnacle, the peak, you know, all right, the, the, the brink, you know, the precipice of their new world order. But that's also their end. Because when you are about to, you know, fill your belly, the heavenly father shall cast forth fire upon you. He's going to bring you down. And what's going to happen when all of this happened, the elites are going to go into isolation or uh, Salakia. They're going to go into, you know, uh, hiding. They're going to go into their bunkers because there's an aspect in there, you know, with the, the main character. Or rather, he's not the main character, but he's one of the main characters. Um, he, he's basically mentioning how, you know, he's, he has a client. You know, he became real cool with the client. The client, you know, used to joke about, you know, uh, uh, SHFT, you know, uh, or SHTF shit hitting the fan. And, you know, what he's going to do. And he would laugh about it. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and um, basically was giving him inside information you know, of something that was going to happen. But eventually the individual got a call from his client. He said it, that um, his client had had to move around some, some big numbers, some big money. And his, his, he was like, wow, this is even big, a big number for my client. So he said um, he began to joke with the, with the client because they would normally joke and they would laugh at certain things. So he said when he joked, Joked about, he said, I guess you, you and the cabal and the rich elites upper-ups are about to, you know, go into hiding. Ha-ha, he was expecting his, 
his uh, client to laugh at that. But the client didn't laugh. And he said, with a serious voice, he said, you take care out there. As if he knew something was going to happen. And, and <laughs> basically, that was it. So these elites know what's coming down the pipe. Because how would you know that a so-called a cyber attack is going to happen, right? How would you know? How would you know that so-called terrorists uh, 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 are going to do certain things? How do you know that before it happened and do not put the proper, proper, the proper precautions in place to stop it from happening? That means that you were behind it and you, will, or, and you allowed it to happen. So, um, um, the elites in the midst of all of this chaos that they're going to start in the earth, they're going to go into hiding the book of Isaiah 24 and 22, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered into a pit and they shall be shut up in prison. And after many days, they shall be visited because those doomsday bunkers and things that the elites are going to hide in, which is multi-billion dollar uh, uh, bunkers, so that all of the shit that they started in the earth, they can go in there and they could uh, isolate themselves from the world and they can survive, you know, the destruction that they helped to cause upon the earth via World War III and this place being attacked. And then afterwards, they want to come out and reign over the earth. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be more so like during the time of Joshua when the kings of the of the uh, the Hamites ran into isolation in the pit trying to hide from, you know, the disaster that was going on in their cities when they were being taken over. But however, a heavy stone was laid upon it. And then after they went around conquering, then they came back and gathered those kings and put their foots upon their neck and slew their asses. This is what's going to happen to the rich elites, the book of Joshua 10 and 16. But these five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave of Makeda. And it was told Joshua saying, the five kings are found and hid in the cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, roll a great stone upon the mouth of the cave and set men by it for to keep them. So after, they, after Joshua went around conquering, him in the, in the armies of Israel. Then they came back for those kings. And that's how it's going to be when the elect get done taking over the world. Like omni Man, you know, or like, uh, 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 what's my man's name? You know, um, is it Brandon or Brian? You know, from um, Brightburn. Take the world. All right, the elect men, the 144,000 men, all right, of the nation of Israel are going to come back with Yahweh Shah and they're going to take the world, man. All right, we're going to go around getting the world in order. And then afterwards, after many days, we're going to visit the elites. Yahweh Rath is out. I'm a part of that number, man. All right, and, and, and you brothers that are laboring as well. But they're going to be visited and they're going to be put in chains and shackles and they're going to be slaves. Now, before I read certain things about that movie, I do want to read this because um, this is something that was brought out on Redacted or, or something that was mentioned on Redacted. And one of the videos that you've seen earlier, it says geopolitical instability raises threat of a catastrophic cyber attack in the next two years. How in the fuck do you know that? How do you know? All right, what is, what is that uh, famous <laughs> uh, viral video? How are they going to know? They're not going to know. How are they going to know? All right, how, does they, how do they know? So anyways, it says cybersecurity is increasingly influencing how and where businesses invest with uh, half re-evaluating uh, the countries they do business. 93% of cybersecurity experts and 86% of businesses, business leaders believe global geopolitical instability is likely to lead to a catastrophic cyber attack in the next two years. Lack of skilled cyber experts is a threat to business and society with two key sectors, 
such as energy, energy utilities are reporting 25% gap in critical skills. All right, despite challenges, organization and improving cyber resilience, um, it says re uh, global cybersecurity outlook report 2023 and visit wefforum.com for more information on annual meeting at Davos, blah, 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 blah. All right. So anyways, I'm going to put this in um, the description box, of course. Let's read from here. It says expanding the cybersecurity talent pool is needed to solve this problem. Several successful cybersecurity skills programs are underway around the world, but uh, many have difficulty scaling to large numbers. Greater cross-industry collaboration and public and private are, is needed to overcome this. Geopolitical is reshaping are the legal, regulatory, and tech, techn technological environment as global instability increases, cyber risks, the report calls for a renewed focus on cooperation, which basically all of these wars and, and, and all of this beef that's going on between these nations, they're basically saying they, these nations could perform cyber attacks. All right, um, another article... This one is from defense1.com and it says um, major cyber attack will cause significant loss by 2025, experts predict. A major cyber attack will happen between now and 2025 and it will be large enough to cause significant loss of life property, property losses, damages, death at a level of tens of billions of dollars, according to more than 60% of technology experts interviewed by the Pew Internet and American Life Logic. But other experts interviewed for the project Digital Life in 2015 released Wiz. They said a current preoccupation in cyber conflict is product of software merchants looking to hype public anxiety are against an eternal or uh, unconquerable threat. So anyways, I'm going to put that one in all right, the description box as well, all right, which um, they're going to do it, you know, which I, I believe that they'll do it and they'll do it to pretty much shut the society down. They'll do it to collapse the economy. All right. So there can be a, uh, a major reset. All right. And they can bring about their CBDC and eventually their RFID CHIP. So now, going back to uh, the movie, all right, which this is a quote from the movie. I spent a lot of uh, time studying the cost benefits analysis of military campaigns. There was one program in particular that terrified my client uh, the most, a simple three-stage maneuver that could topple the country's government from within. Isolation, uh, disable their communications and tra transportation, make the target as death, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. Uh, that was the, f the, the first stage. The second stage is synchronized chaos. Uh, chaos. Terrorized them with covert attacks and misinformation, overwhelming their defense capabilities, their, their weapon system, vulnerable uh, to extremists and their own military. Without a clear enemy or motive, people would start turning on each other. If done successfully, the third stage will happen on its own, which the third stage is a coup d'etat, a civil war, and a collapse. Now, to push scriptures with all of this, all right, because it speaks about an isolation and dis disabling, you know, their communication and uh, transportation, which um, when there's a warning that something is going to happen, right, you're going to have a lot of people uh, fleeing our, the city and these freeways are going to become crowded all right, when they catch wind that something is, is getting ready to happen. Here the book of Nahum 2 and 4, the chariot shall rage in the streets and shall jeshu 
one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. All right. And they shall run like the lightnings. All right. Which is going to be a bunch of, you know, rush hour, you know, traffic, you know, cars trying to flee the cities because they know that it's getting ready to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. All right. And that these cities are about to fall. So they're going to try to flee, which they showed that within their movie as well. But however, you had uh, traffic jams on the freeway, but then you had um, basically like Tesla electronic cars that were that were under cyber attack as well. So they were just crashing just everywhere. All right. This is a bad movie. You know, I think you should check it out. Um, so uh, airplanes, you know, all of that, everything that. Re, uh, relied on e electricity already relied on uh gps and things like that they were man them planes were falling out of out of the sky all right people are unalive because they crash into the ocean bodies washing up on the sand and you know air airplanes crashing in the cities all right but then you had uh people that didn't know how to navigate they didn't know how to get around all right, they were basically left out of the loop because they're so used to using their cell phones for everything. All right, everybody has become used to using their cell phone for everything. Use your cell phone for an alarm to wake up. You use your cell phone, you know, uh, for a flashlight. Use your cell phone for, you know, communicating with people. Use your cell phone for checking the internet. Some people use their cell phone for buying and selling. Using your cell phone to clock in and out from work. Using your cell phone for navigation to get to work. And this is the reason why the RFID CHIP is going to be the new cell phone. It's going to replace the cell phone. All right. You're so uh, relying on technology. All right. To the point where if, if it was taken away, you would lose your mind. But however, you know, this technology isn't new. All right, when you go to Exodus 28 and 30, it says, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of the judgment the Urim and the Thummim. All right? And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before Yahweh. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon the, uh, his heart before Yahweh continually. Now the word Urim and Thummim, all right, is dealing with light and perfection. All right, any time right, the, uh, uh, the nation of Israel needed to know something, they would inquire of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and he would either shine a light through the, the, the white stone or the black stone, all right, to basically give them an answer. All right, another example, 1 Samuel 28 and 6, it says, And Saul inquired of Yahweh, and Yahweh answered him not, neither by dream nor by Urim, nor by profit, all right, because the Urim and the Thummim, all right, all of that, that light and perfection, all right, was the technology upon uh, the high priest's breast, breastplate, all right, in which he would go and inquire of the Heavenly Father, all right, the cell phone and his technology isn't nothing but light and perfection, it's the Urim and the Thummim, when you look at your cell phone, which I'm recording this lesson now, this is, isn't nothing but light coming through the cell phone, and that's how you're able to see the things that are on the screen because there's nothing but light. And you can use your cell phone either to go and find out information that will be beneficial to you. You can find out things that happened in the past, the present, or in the future. That's what they would do with the Urim and the Thummim. Or you can use it for entertainment, although they didn't do that with the Urim and the Thummim. But however, the scriptures does talk about the internet. And the internet is a part of the communication. So that's when they when they take away the internet, that will be the 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 um the isolation by disabling communication and tra transportation. Transportation runs off of the internet. All right, whether it be with pilots, whether it be with trains, whether it be with buses, whether it be with cars. A lot of the cars use internet GPS in order for you to navigate or you need your phone to navigate to that place. 
Why do you think when you get on a plane, they say, don't, don't use your cell phone? Because they have their signals coming to that plane. And your signal from your phone can disrupt it. So you have to put your phone in airplane mode. So when there's a cyber attack, a lot of planes can fall out of the sky. A lot of vehicles could crash. But however, the major important thing that the internet was used for was to push this truth. All right, it says in the book of Job 39 and 9, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib, which the unicorn was created for us to push the truth. Although Esau used it to send signals from, from uh, the, the one place to the unicorn, which is a satellite, to another place. But however, even those satellites, which are used for sending information, but is also used for, for defense, all right, even they are going to come under attack, under a cyber attack. And then uh, another thing would be the crash of the markets, the stock market, you know, the economy. Zephaniah 1 and 10, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, said Yahweh, that there shall be all right, the noise of a cry from the fish gate and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. So what is that talking about? Well, this is dealing with a place called Maktesh, which was a merchant city. It was a city of trading. So it dealt with commerce. All right, it dealt with money transactions. All right, it dealt with, an, it was a, an, an economy. But however, there was a crashing, okay? This is a biblical prophecy of the great crashing of the economic system of this place. So when the cyber attack happens, the economy is going to crash. All right, and they're going to use that to, to, to uh, and blame that, all right, on the collapse and eventually bring forth their new world order in the, the new economy, which would be the RFID CHIP, which is the MOTB. It says, how are you inhabitants of Mektesh for all the merchant people are cut down all they that bear silver are cut off, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease, that stay, that say in their heart, Yahweh would not do good, neither will he do evil. Because you have a lot of Israelites that are out there that call themselves leaders. But when it comes down to warning the people, they don't, because they don't believe in the prophecies that they're going to happen. And what shows that they don't believe in the prophecies in the, is the fact that they're not warning about it. They're not teaching. Reading on it says, Therefore their good shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of Yahweh is near. It is near and it hasteneth greatly. The voice of the great day of Yahweh. Once again, we're at the precipice of it. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. And uh, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteful, wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of uh, clouds and thick darkness. Yeah, because eventually once, you know, they see that this place is vulnerable. All right. They're going to destroy it by thermonuclear destruction. That is all of the enemies that America has built up. A day of trumpet and alarming against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh and their blood shall be poured out as dust all right, and their flesh as dung. You know, which when you walk as blind men, that's because you don't have the light. All right, you don't have uh, um, the ability to see. You know, or to perceive. You know, so a lot of people, once the Internet is shut down, they're not going to have their phone to give them alerts to tell them because there was another thing. You know, um, there was like four alerts, you know, on a, on, on a woman's cell phone because they didn't the, the cell phones were shut down. All of the Internet, everything was shut down. But she seen like four alerts that popped up on the phone. 
But when she went to check the alert, she couldn't because she didn't have the internet on her phone anymore. But it mentioned something about, you know, uh, uh, cyber. It, 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 it was like news apps, like breaking news, you know, news break and CNN and something else. And the last one was like some scribbly words, but it says C cyber, you know, attack, you know. So you're not going to have your phones, you know, to give you information and say what's going to happen. You're not going to have access to watching the prophets. So you're going to be left in darkness. You know, you're going to be left out there. And you're just going to have to deal with reality or what reality has become. Reading on, and I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh. And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahweh's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, and he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Because remember, eventually once this place is vulnerable, all right, then that's when these other nations are going to destroy this place with the thermonuclear destruction. All right, the next phase is synchronized chaos once again, ter terrorize them with covert attacks and misinformation overwhelming their defense capabilities. All right, uh, in which, you know, uh, uh, secret attacks, you know, uh, uh, will, will happen. False flags, wag the dog events, all right, black swan events, all right, misinformation. They're already putting propaganda out there. You know, uh, they're letting all of these, these, these migrants across the border, but then they're saying that terrorists are mingled in the midst of them. So why continue to let them across? And you're basically making it seem as if they're, oh, this is an uncontrollable situation. All right, so someone is telling them to come here. All right, and then it's only men that are a certain age, around a certain age group, the majority of them. And then people are interviewing them and they're like, yeah, we work for the, the UN. Yeah, we got this car from the UN. Yeah, we get money on it. Because they're hired. They're paid mercenaries by the, by the UN. So that they can come here and, and do particular jobs that they're being paid for to do. Reading on, it says um, their weapon system vulnerable to extremists, which the extremists is, is, is you know, first of all, they, they, call, they call us extremists. But then it says in their own military, because I believe recently... They they found a certain amount of uh, uh, people, you know, that they uh, are considered to be extremists within the military. So I think I've seen an article on that, which they know that some of their men inside of their forces are against them. It says people will start turning on each other. If done successfully, the third stage will happen on its own. Now, before I go there, I want to grab this scripture in Jeremiah 50 and um, uh, 13. It says, because of the wrath of Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited, and it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues, because the, the, the last and final plagues is what? You know, which the Heavenly Father is dismantling this place within stages, but the last and final plague is going to be the thermonuclear destruction. This is Revelation 15 and 1, and I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on a sea of glass, having are the harps of Yahweh. So these are those that didn't receive the MOTB. Of the nation of Israel, they got the victory. And they were delivered by the chariots from the seventh last plague, which is the thermonuclear destruction. So going uh, back to Jeremiah 50 and 14, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against Yahweh, which the bow is the silo. The arrows is a metaphor for the thermonuclear missiles. 
And Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai said, spare no arrows. See, there's going to be uh, many arrows that are shot at this place, which are a metaphor for the ICBM missile. And inside these ICBM missiles, there are multiple nuclear warheads. All right, in which the scriptures say that 200 million of them are going to hit. Now it says, spare no arrows, which means that these nations that have it, all of these nations that have it are going to use every single one of them. But this is all done by the plan of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh The book of Jeremiah 50 and 15, it says, shout against her round about, she have given her hand. All right, her foundations are falling, her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh take vengeance upon her as she have done due unto her, which uh, uh, this place has been involved in, in, in damn near every single war upon the planet Earth since America came into uh, existence, the beginning of it becoming into America. You know, once once this place was established, they were they were had their hand in damn near every war. So as she have done doing to her. So what's getting ready to happen to this place is, is getting ready to be taken down. All right, and these are the stages that the Heavenly Father is, is, is allowing to happen to basically bring this place to its collapse. So once again, if the second stage was done successfully, then that will bring about the third stage, which is a coup d'etat. Now, what is, it, what is a, a coup d'etat? A coup d'etat, it says a coup d'etat or simple, simply a coup. It's typically an illegal and overt attempt by military organizations or other government elites to unseat or uh, incubate leadership, an incubant leadership. A self-coup is when a leader, uh, having come to power through a, a legal means, tries to stay in power through illegal means. By one estimate, there were uh, 457 coups attempt, attempts from 1950 to 2010, half of which were successful. All right. So you have, you know, particular leaders, you have the elites that are ruling the world. But guess what? They're trying to stay in power through illegal means. All right. So they're going, going to, you know, do all of this. All right. To basically uh, continue to have their control over the earth. And that's the reason why there's something called order of chaos, order out of chaos. All right, there's a, they, they, they are in power, but however, through illegal means, they're trying to stay in power. So they're pushing for all of these things that happen in the earth are under a coup d'etat, you know, in which they'll say that the coup d'etat is the people rising up against the, the government to try to overthrow them. But this is in a re reaction to all of the things that you have caused to happen in the earth. So one of the things that's going to happen is a is a, uh, a civil W.A.R. All right. Now, Zechariah 14 and 13, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor and the hand of uh, Salakia. Let me read that one more time. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult shall uh, from Yahweh shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor, which this is going to happen all right, on a major scale all right, involving uh, World War III. But however, within cities, you're going to have neighbor against neighbor you're going to have citizen against citizen are you going to have the people that turn on each other all right because uh one more thing that this individual said he said um without having are right, any you know immediate enemy or anyone to point the finger at the people are going to begin to turn on each other they're going to begin to turn on each other so when they go to these leaders to pretty much overthrow these leaders and there's no one there or whatever, all right, because they had their heads up and they went into hiding and they fled, all right, it ain't going to be nothing but just chaos in the city. 
All right, gunshots ringing. These these uh, uh, migrant mercenaries are right, going around slaying and destroying. All right, people turning on each other, invading each other's houses. All right, uh, 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 dead bodies scattered everywhere. All right, a lot of destruction of the city. All right, people that was ill-prepared are stealing and unearthing people in order to take the things that they need. All right, a lot of, um, you know, stabbing and, you know, you know, sh people being shot down, thrown from buildings, you know, infants, you know, women being ravished. All right, this this can lead to a lot. Now, all right, second Ezra 15 and 14, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and the people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hand. So, notice how, you know, when certain cyber attacks happen or things happen, oh, the Russians did it. It was the Russians. The Russians rigged the election. That's propaganda. All right. So they want you to look at the, them and to think that they did it, but all the while, you know, they could be doing it themselves. To gain the advantage over the people. All right. They want things to spiral or seem as if they're spiraling out of control so that they can bring forth their agenda. But however, you, you will have nations fighting against nations. And can other nations possibly attempt a cyber attack? Yes, that's true. Uh, reading on, it says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand are in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, uh, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So these cities are going to be locked down. You know, uh, um, roads are going to be full of cars, abandoned. People that are decaying inside of it. All right. Uh, if it happened during the winter time, people can run out of gas and traffic jams and freeze in their cars. They can starve to death out there. There's going to be a lot of people on foot. People on the roads are going to be being robbed and, 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 and unearthed. Women are going to be being ravished on the, on the roads trying to walk, you know, to or from a city. When you get to a city, it's going to be all kind of chaos, disease, pestilence, and destruction. All right, uh, wild beasts being loose, attacking people. All right, while they're walking through woods. All right, it's about to be bad out here. All right, reading on, it says, For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. You had uh, one scene where a lady in there said that basically she didn't like people. But she said with everything that's going on, she's starting to miss people. It's going to be so many people being destroyed and these cities are going to be so quiet because a lot of people are going to be unalived and in hiding. That you're going to desire to see a face, a familiar face. All right, people that you didn't get along with in the world that you couldn't stand, you're going to... Be happy when you run across them, if you do. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. So with that, you know, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone. Peace and love, say, taste and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom and the Bible ball. Kwan